welcome back to the channel. Last week, we actually sewed up quite a few different drosseras. We sewed up drossera regi, rotundifolia, and drossera filiformis. If you guys haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out after you watch this one. But we have another surprise in the mail today, guys. We got another pack of seeds, guys. So obviously that means that we have to sew them up again. And if you wanna know what seeds there are, what species there are, what type of plants there actually are, make sure that you actually watch to the end of the video because I will go through them all within this video. So stick around. Okay guys, so you might remember that about a month ago, our little drosser Regi died. And that is why we actually bought more and we sewed them up in that pot outside in that video we did last week. Now, at the same time that I was buying all of those seeds, I also wanted to get a little bit more different plants so that we have some more stuff to grow because some of you guys may or may not know this, but actually finding carnivorous plants in Australia is a little bit difficult and I'm really not sure why, but anyway, that's why I went ahead and bought more seeds. Now, I didn't buy just one pack of seeds, I didn't buy two packs, I bought six, and we got one extra pack for free. And I don't know what pack that is, but that means we have a total of seven different packs of seeds that we are going to grow. Now, I hear you guys wondering, okay, well, you got seeds, you got some seven packs of seeds, what seeds are there? And I will let you guys know in just a second. Now, let me explain something to you guys. I have bought three sets of seeds, and this is obviously our second set that has arrived for us in the mail, and we have one more to go, which is taking quite a long time because obviously the world is pretty slow right now. And every single day I go to the mailbox and I look in the mailbox and, I, and I'm like, please let the third seed pack arrive now. I really wanna grow these plants with you guys. So yeah, this is our second one, and I'm super, super excited to actually share them with you guys. Now, I'm not going to reveal which type of plants they are right now, but I am going to tell you the soil that they need. And the soil that they need is pretty generic for all the different carnivorous plants that you actually can grow. So now you're wondering, what soil is that? And it's the same soil that, as I said, we use for most carnivorous plants. It's just a mixture of peat and perlite in a simple ratio of one is to one. And this is the type of soil that you should use for all of your carnivorous plants if you aren't really sure what they really want. You can't use them for every single one because some of them hate it and they will actually die in this soil mix. But the vast majority of them do really well in them and especially the ones that we have bought and we are going to be sowing today, guys. So that means we have to get our mixing pot here. That looks really, really good. As you can tell, we used it last time for our seeds that we used last week and it looks really good in there. You can see that everything is like super clean. There's no algae in there and we can use this right away, guys. So let's get to mixing all of our soil. Wait guys, let me actually show you something here. Let's just do a quick little update. Here is our pot of Drosera regi. Nothing is coming up yet. Rotundifolia, nothing. Filiformis, nothing. Here is our pot of Drosera mancara that we, you know, we sewed together a long time ago. This is just grass at the back, so don't worry. And here is Prefolia. These are the seeds that we got from Wretched Davian one of our subscribers. Thank you so, so much. And nothing has come up in these guys either. And here is our Drosera Adelaide pot. Remember the plants that fell off of this thing here? Doing super well. There's the other one. He has a little seedling. So that's just a little update on them guys. Let's just go back inside.
Okay guys, so now that we have our soil mixed up and we have the sphagnum all moisture, moisturized up, we have everything ready and we're just gonna do what we do. Every single time that we plant some seeds, we're gonna put the bottom layer of sphagnum, fill up the pot with some soil, and then sow the seeds in afterwards. So <laughs> let's get to it. Okay guys, so obviously all of our pots are now ready to have their seeds, you know, obviously sowed onto the soil. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually get the seeds out and you guys will finally find out what specific seeds we got and how they look like. Okay guys, so as I've just said, we are sowing up these seeds. Now this is obviously not very helpful, you guys don't know what these are, but this is paper. So what we will be growing in these pots is paper plants. So obviously we have a green one, we have a blue one, and we have this yellow one. So obviously if you guys didn't know this, um, money grows on trees and you can grow money and paper from trees. So these are obviously little paper plants. I hope you guys knew I was joking. These are actually Saracenia pods. Saracenia are also known as the American pitcher plant or trumpet pitcher plant. And as I said, we have seven of them. And yeah, it's all in these little packets over here. So we're gonna open them up and we will look at them a little bit closer. But before we do that, I wanna talk a little bit more about how to actually get these guys to grow. Because if you guys have seen some of our older videos, you should know that Saracenias actually need something called... Sorry, they need... Sorry, they need something called stratification. And what stratification is basically is where the seeds sit on some media or in water, basically. They need to essentially be kept damp and cold for a period of at least four weeks, so at least one month before that they can actually start growing. And the reason for this is because in the wild they are sown in, I don't actually know, Oh, I think they fall, they fall in just before winter time. So their seeds sit on the cold and damp soil for the whole winter and then come springtime, then they grow up and obviously sprout. We've done it with our previous ones that are outside. And the way that we did that was actually a bit different. What we did is that we cut up some sphagnum moss, some of this stuff over here. And then we put our seeds inside of that little, a little bag with the sphagnum moss and put them into the fridge. Now, there are different ways you can do it. You can even take a little jar and put the seeds in that, a jar of water, and put that into the fridge for four weeks. And what we're gonna try here is literally just putting them on the soil, keeping that soil nice and moist, and keeping that in the fridge for four weeks. There are many ways you can do it, so you guys can really experiment with what you want to do. And yeah, essentially you have to do that for Saracenians, or else they won't really grow, they won't sprout that much. If, if you don't have, give them a stratification, maybe two of them will sprout, even if you have like, 10 so you have to make sure that you do do it now these are different species i can't tell you exactly which ones they are because they have numbers on them so these are actually all crosses they are very nice crosses actually and as i open them with you guys i will be putting pictures of them and giving you guys their names so now let's get these guys down and let's change the camera so you guys can see what's going on okay guys so we are going to start with this one over here this is gift something i think it i think it says pod like p-o-d but it could be pop like p-o-p or it could be like a number like something zero nine so i have absolutely no idea what this is 
But if you guys have an idea, please let me know so we can try and figure this out. But I do just think this says gift pod. So this is really great. I love getting gifts like this from people. But the thing that really annoys me is that I have no idea what it is. So we're going to have a mystery Saracenia growing for us. And that is a little bit sucky because I have no idea what its parents are. I have no idea about its lineage or anything, but it's still good to have one of these guys. So let's open it up and let's take a look at their seeds. Well, these are some good looking seeds, guys. We, ha we have a ton of them as well. We have 28 seeds, which is really, really good. So I'm really gra glad that we have so many. These seeds are quite light in color. So I think that there is some kind of Saracenia Luca Villa in here, but most of the seeds are actually kind of the same color and I'm pretty sure these are a cross. So yeah, it probably has Luca Villa in it, but it's probably a big mixture of different things. But if you guys really want to see how the seeds look, the camera's not going to focus. But they're just kind of like bean shaped, I guess, and they're very small. They are about, what, one millimeter in size, one to two mils, depending on which direction, you know, if they're the short way, if you turn them, then they're like a little bit two, two or three mils. So it really depends on the orientation. But as I said, this is our gift pod and make sure that you guys actually write out your labels so that you know where your seeds are and which pot they are and so you don't make any mistakes. So this is number 202, or if you turn it, if you turn it this way, it is also number 202. So if we open it up, we should have some seeds in here. And this specific hybrid is, as I said, number 202, but its actual name is A28MKXSELF. So what this means, this is obviously the code that the plant has because it is a big cross already, or its parents are specific cultivars or whatever. The cross is what people generally would say a cross, it's not an X, so you say it's a cross self. So it's, it has X with itself. So these seeds obviously come from the plant itself, then it made babies with itself. So we know that the baby should look very, very similar to the mother plant or the adult plant A28MK. Seeds look very, very similar to those previous ones, as I said, but we do have a good chunk of them, which is great. It's good to have a, a, fair, a fair amount of seeds so you, you have the opportunity to grow a few of them. And the thing that happens is that sometimes the seeds die. So, you know, obviously having quite a few of them is great. Next up, we have number 204. But if we turn it this way, it is gibberish. So, as I said, number 204, this is A60MK cross L027A0. So, yeah. So, this is a cross of two very random parents. We have a big name as well. But let's take a look at the seeds because that's what we really want to see. Wow, we got a... A lot of them in this one, guys. And you guys might tell these seeds are a little bit darker in color than the previous ones, but we have quite a few of them as well, which is obviously great. Here we have 257. A good amount of seeds as well. A good thing about these seeds is that they do look pretty healthy. I mean, they are a little bit small, but it's okay because I do think we'll get some germination out of them, but yeah, they are a little bit small, so we may struggle to get a lot of germination from these guys. Number 261, or 192, if you guys want to be reading it upside down. And these seeds look much better, guys, than the previous pack. You can see the seeds are a little bit bigger, and they're also much lighter in color. But the bigger seeds means they are much healthier. And this is seed pack number 70. Quite a good amount of seeds here as well, guys. Now, the reason why there is no full name on this is because the name is actually way too long. I just made sure it's a big seven because on my, on my computer, I give them all codes. So I know number three is this, number seven is this. And this one's full name is L032AO Saracenia, Saracenia leucophila, a typical clone, clone from Taras Caro in 2009 cross self. So I am not gonna write that down because I'm also very, very lazy to write it all down for no reason. And this is our last pod of seeds, number 66. Made, made sure that he put a line there so 
it's obviously orientated the right way. And here we go, some seats as well, they're looking a little bit small compared to some of the other ones, but as I said, we should have some germination from them. So now let's put all of our seeds aside and now we will actually sew them up in our pots. So here's all of our seeds. Cool, so let's do it. Okay guys, so as always, the way to sow carnivorous plant seeds is very, very easy. All you do is that you take your seeds, like this one, you make sure that you put the label in so you know what pots they're going into. Take your seeds very gently. If there's something like drosera seeds or sun juice, be very careful because they're tiny, but you just, you just take it like this in your hand and gently tap so the seeds fall off, the, off of the paper and onto the soil. So, so, so easy guys. And that is it. This is it for our gift pop or nano nano, whatever it is. Sarsenia gift, there it is. And let's do this now for all of the plants. So that is it for all of our seeds, guys. They are now sown. As you can tell, they're obviously in their water trays and they have some rainwater inside of them because that's the water that these guys need. If you give them tap water or chlorine, they will die. So make sure that you give them the right type of water. And now the next step is to simply spray them down. I'm gonna use our wand here, which is part of a big pump bottle thing. You can find some spray bottles in the description below if you guys want some. There's also links to peat and sand but because of the whole, you know, issue with the world right now, these suppliers of the soil and the sand and stuff, they no longer can supply anymore. So hopefully that gets fixed pretty soon because I, I did try and find new links for you guys, but none of the links that I found were really trustworthy or they were way too expensive. And I don't want you guys to be buying really, really expensive things for no reason. But yeah, I really hope that those people are able to get their stuff, you know, soon again so that Obviously, you guys can get some soil and they can start earning an income for themselves again. So, yeah, anyway, get your spray bottle and then all you want to do is just spray these guys from the top. And the reason why you do this is so that the seeds can make good contact with the soil. They can fall into any little crevices around there. They can get some water on them right now as well. And it just really helps to essentially, for the most part, just get the seeds packed into the soil. And that is it guys, super, super easy, super, super simple. And the reason why, as I said, that we're putting them into the fridge now, putting these little guys into the vegetable section, is because they need to have at least four weeks of cold stratification. If you guys do get these plants or these seeds and you get them, let's say at the beginning of winter or in the middle of winter, just put them onto the soil like this, keep them hydrated and just put them outside right next to the adult plants and they will naturally get their own stratification. You don't have to worry about them being in the fridge, taking them out the fridge, all that other rubbish like that. It's so much easier like that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did find it helpful, remember to leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next episode.